Hello, I am Lady Aska, and today we give a look into the new Rewrite Studio stable version. If you worked with Rewrite Studio before already, you will see the difference right away. The new version's interface is bright white instead of the darker gray they used before. Many were wondering what would happen with their older models that were created in the beta version 0.14, and the program will advise you right in the beginning that you can, in fact, transfer them over, but that it may cause problems. So the best you can do is to try to convert the models that are important to you and hope that it doesn't cause any trouble. And in case you were wondering, yes, the old beta version of Vrite Studio is still available and is still supported. So if you don't like the new version, you can still work with the beta version instead. When you transfer one of your older models over, they will ask you to save them in a separate place and the conversion starts. Then the model will appear on the recently edited top part and you can open it up in the program. You can see that the bright white interface is a bit counterproductive, as it's really hard to see lighter parts of the model. I hope we see a dark mode in the future, as the gray into beta version made it easier to see mistakes while editing and was less straining on the eyes. According to their website, the conversion changes the following in your models. Parameters for face, hairstyles, body and outfits, hair material, adjusting skin and face texture to the new model data, and adjusting shade color calibration. Layers apparently keep the same order as the head on your old models. Also keep in mind that you can only convert models that were created with version 0.14. If your avatar was created in an even older version, you won't be able to convert it over. How good is the new accessories feature? The feature itself looks great. You can now add glasses without using a workaround. Glasses of my avatar are still made with hair. And they added two types of animal ears, cat ears and bunny ears. Though the cat can actually be transformed into various styles and you can edit the textures too, as usual, to give it a personalized look. What I am missing though is a feature to actually save your created assets. We have now the option to save hair and clothes to be used later, but that feature seems to be completely missing for the accessories. Which means if you wanted to use the exact same asset that you made for one avatar on another, you would have to do everything from scratch again. A next step for the developers should also be that we could import custom accessories, which you apparently can't for now. There's also still no option for actual head accessories like heads, bows, tiaras, etc. So I hope we'll see more of that feature upgraded in the future. How good is the overlay clothing feature? Honestly, I found that one a bit underwhelming, confusing, and they didn't implement it right. Why am I saying this? The feature does in theory work. You choose a base template and you can lay other templates on top as you customize them. But as you may see here, that is at times what it looks like. What is definitely missing are more sliders to actually adjust the templates to make them fit over the body without looking like a pillow fort. Even when I reduced the bust size, it still looked weird and puffy because I couldn't lay the dress closer to the body or reduce the size of the cardigan by itself. Here we still have a long way to go and the feature is still an early stage too. I am convinced though the community will already be able to create beautiful overlaid outfits because a few combinations work in fact well together. It's just not all combinations, and we would still have to work our way around this feature. If you like the content so far, feel free to leave a like and subscribe for future videos on Vroid tutorials and informations for aspiring VTubers. Don't worry, we are still not done yet. Is the new version easier to use? In my opinion, the new version is a bit confusing at times and that not only for beginners, but especially for Vroid veterans. Absolute beginners will have a good time with it, I believe, because they just have to pick and apply their favorite assets, which I think is a huge plus and upgrade from the beta version. Veterans will have a hard time finding their favorite features because they are now hidden in places you wouldn't have guessed right away. Ears and head features, for example, can now be found under skin, Eyes can be altered under eyes sets and mouth as well as teeth can be found under mouth, which makes the most sense so far. 
Features where you could alter rim light, shading and outlines are now under the section Look. And in case you are missing the Pose feature, it can now be found by clicking the photo camera icon in the top right corner and has still all the familiar features besides the export feature, which is now placed at the side of the camera and allows you to export your avatar as usual or upload it to Vroid Hub. The 3D print option, on the other hand, is not yet available. And what else changed completely? Besides the fact that some features are in different places now, the biggest difference to the beta version is definitely the way that hair is handled now. While it's great for beginners to just pick from the presets, veterans of the program may recall that in the past you could save your presets outside of the program and import them later back in. This doesn't seem to be possible anymore. Instead, each preset has to be worn by an avatar so you can add it to your library. That also makes it impossible now to combine presets. In the past, you could simply combine two presets like hair and a flower, for example, with a program called HP4VR. This was especially useful if you bought a preset like horns or said flower from the Boost store and wanted to combine it with an already existing hair preset. The only known workaround for this is to actually use the old beta version 0.14, create an avatar there, load the hair preset in so you can transfer the avatar over into the new version of the program and save the hair there. Given that the program is actually able to do that without messing up the texture. To back that up, I actually opened the usual folder that held the hair presets before and while a second folder was indeed created for the new version, the hair preset folder is now empty, despite the fact that I already transferred one of my presets over. And what is my personal verdict? I think the new version is a step into the right direction, but it's still in its baby shoes and needs a lot more polishing. This version was in my opinion created for beginners to quickly make themselves a cute little anime style avatar and I think with that in mind it works really well. For advanced users though, it may look more like a step back and I wouldn't wonder if most just stick with the beta version for now instead of using the new version. Let's just say, despite the new features, the new version seems to be too inflexible. Sure, you can alter textures and overlay clothes now, but all other customization features seem to have taken a hit and that not only in terms of general usage, but also in terms of selling assets on booth. Now you can't just sell hair presets anymore without selling someone a full avatar with it, so to say. And you also can't import new accessories yet, so you still would have to import using Unity after. I think what most veterans hoped for was not really fulfilled, but for beginners, it's the right moment to dive in and have fun with the new version. If you have any questions or requests for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Hope you have a wonderful day.